Now, aside from these lifespan growth trends, we also have to pay attention to the changes in our body proportions. This is something we really only pay attention to from prenatal through to adolescence, but it's the idea that the proportion of our height that is made up of our head changes drastically from infancy to adulthood. And this is the idea that in prenatal development, our head is quite large in proportion to the rest of our body. And in infancy, it remains so. Our head is quite dramatically a largest part of our body. Our feet and our legs are usually afterthoughts. In fact, this is one of the reasons that toddlers are often described as being top heavy. This is the idea that toddlers are more prone to being clumsy and toddling or falling over, especially in very cute or adorable ways when playing in the snow. And that's because their center of gravity is very different from adult center of gravity. Their head is making up such a large part of their body that when they fall over, sometimes their head is their heaviest part and their trunk and their back muscles are much weaker. This is also why things like swimming pools and bathtubs can be very dangerous to infants and toddlers, even if there's only a few inches of water. And that's because if a toddler falls over head first, they may not have the strength to pick themselves back up out of that swimming pool. And so even a few inches that normally would not come up to their head if they were staying upright by falling over could be very dangerous. So although in childhood we're growing less intensely than what we did in both infancy and during puberty, but we are still growing. And in childhood, what tends to be growing is not so much the size of the head, but the size of the limbs and the trunk. And so our body is putting on lots of length and then our legs are putting on lots of length. And if you follow the image on this slide, it's actually following the cephalocaudal pattern in which our head is pretty developed first. And then once that's developed, we develop our trunk. And then once that's developed, we're really developing the length in our legs. So in infancy, our head is making up about a quarter of our height or 25%. And in adulthood, our head is only making up an eighth or 12.5% of our height. Whereas our legs in adulthood are making up half our height. In infancy, they were barely making up one third. And so it really does change over the lifespan. And this is another pattern that's pretty typical that we tend to be screening infants and young children for. The final growth pattern I want to mention is our, with our body tissues. And this is the idea that we're not just getting bigger and we're not just changing our body portions, but our body tissues also change in a developmental pattern. This is the idea that we have certain developmental errors where we tend to put on more fat or less fat, depending on what our body needs. We know that in prenatal development, we tend to put on lots of body fat around eight months in gestation, and that helps us to insulate and keep warm. And having lots of fat during our infant years is really important because it helps with that regulation. By the time we're about three years of age and we're now not a toddler, we're often considered a preschooler, we tend to be a lot more slim. And this is the idea that relative to where we were as a toddler, our face looks a bit thinner, our arms look a little bit less chubby, and we've slimmed down, especially in our torso. This tends to be pretty stable throughout childhood, but then again, rapidly, right before puberty, it's very normal to put on some rapid fat stores. And this is the idea that our body is bulking up in weight so that we can then use that weight to grow in height. We have to put it on first and then use it to grow in stature and in height. And so that's a very normative trend. It's also more normative for us to put on a little bit of weight in our elder years. Although we've seen in the curve that people who live longer tend to not be obese, it's also important to understand that people who live longer tend not to be underweight. And so a little bit of cushioning in our later years has been associated with longevity. Not being obese, not being underweight, but just being a little bit average to slightly over average tends to be linked with the most longevity. We also see fluctuations in infancy in terms of our muscles. And this is the idea when we're first born, we have the components of our muscles, but they're not yet fused together. And so rapidly in the first few years of life, we see lots of growing and thickening of the muscles. This is also why it's very important to do things like infant massage and rubbing the muscles because the muscles are constantly growing. And then of course we have bone growth. When we're born, we tend to have a lot of cartilage that has not yet become bone. We can see this in things like infants elbows. They don't have that bony part to their elbows yet, or their kneecaps are not bony yet. And so these are known as ephesis. And so ephesis are the centers in our body that are cartilage at birth, but will become bone over our infancy. There's one ephesis right on the skull and it's usually, I always thought it was at the crown. It's not at the crown, it's about right here. And this is where the skull has not yet fused together at birth. So it's a little soft spot in the head and it will fuse together. It takes a few months to do so, but that it will close over eventually. 
And so we're born with a lot more cartilage. We continue to have cartilage even into adulthood. You can find it in your nose and in your earlobes. And what's interesting is the parts of our body that are made up of cartilage always continue to grow. And so even in adulthood, once you've completely grown in terms of height and your weight's pretty stable, you will continue to grow in terms of your nose and your ears, which is why elders tend to have larger noses than people in their 30s or 40s.